got a very, 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 very special guest in the studio today. Sir Mo Farah, Olympic gold medalist. What, four Olympic gold medals? And as a young boy, all I wanted to become was a football player, not runner. Four gold medals. Yeah. Olympic gold medals, six world title golds. Sir Mo Farah, Farah. Yeah. Just icon. Or you become a footballer who plays for Arsenal. Hi, and welcome along to AFTV. We've got a very, 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 very special guest in the studio today. Sir Mo Farah, Olympic gold medalist. What, four Olympic gold medals? Six um, world, medal, world golds. Yeah. And that's not to mention all the silvers and all the other competitions he's won throughout the years. Considered by many to be Britain's greatest ever athlete. Yeah. That's that not being well, accurate there? Yeah, yeah, no, it is amazing. And it? on top of that, <laughs> my favourite part, with all that, a massive Arsenal fan. One of the biggest Arsenal fans out there. So it's an absolute pleasure Thank to you have you along, Mo. Thank you. Um, great to have you here. I mean, first of all, let me, before we get into some Arsenal talk, um, your career. I mean, it's been ridiculous. I mean, as I said, being there and seeing you, at the, it's funny enough, I've got to go to the uh, London Stadium later on, take my kids to a concert there, right? Yeah. And that was the scene of where you won that incredible gold medal. I mean, two gold medals. Two, yeah. And being there and seeing that, I mean, it was incredible. I mean, what, what was it like to, to win Olympic gold right here in the UK in front of the British crowd? No, honestly, um, it was amazing. And Robbie, I've watched you many times. Arsenal TV is, you know, massive Arsenal fan. And yeah, look, we get, we, I'm sure we can come back to it. But as, as you said, no, my biggest achievement was winning the 2012 right here in, in our doorstep. And for me... Honestly, that moment it always stays with me as yeah. a nation, you know, to be able to, you know, as an athlete, each athlete around the world or whoever you are, your dream is always, you know, to try and become, to go to Olympics or become Olympic champion. And, you know, for me, what a way to do it right in, in London. Yeah. And I'll never forget that night how, you know, so many people supporting you. And yeah, it just came all together, but it was incredible. Listen, we, the world will never forget that night. It was absolutely incredible. I mean, for you um, as an athlete, I, I, it's incredible what you do. I, I, I watch like athletes like yourself, right? And I still can't get my head around. Number one, how you're able to run so far. <laughs> 10,000 meters, marathons and that, and run it like it's nothing. Yeah. He finishes it, there's a barely a bead of sweat off him. No, I walk down the road, I'm about to die, right? And not only that, run it at such speed. I mean, how do you do it? I don't know. I, 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 it's ridiculous. No, honestly, I, I enjoy it. And again, I started when I was the age of 12 and now I'm 40, getting on, you know, on the other side. But again, running is what you put in, is what you get out of. I always say that because there's no hiding. As I said, like, you know, if you've done the work and you get yourself in the right shape, right frame of mind, you can win stuff. But again, you know, when you get taste of winning, you never really think about it. You're almost like autopilot and you go into it and you just like, you know, each week, 120 miles a week, boom, boom, boom. Uh, hold on. 120 miles a week. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it takes. 120 miles a week? Yeah. That's driving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 120 miles a week. Yeah. But again, it's, listen, if you want to be the best and challenge these guys, that's what, that's what you got to do. And early on, you know, I never started from 120 miles a week. You know, when I was 16, 17, you, you slowly, you know, increase your mileage. And when you increase your mileage, you get up to, you know, 70, 80. And as you get older, you, you find, you know, what works and, and, and stick to it. But again, it's like, as you said, Robbie, everything's back to the preparation. You know, and we were just yeah. having a chat early on. It's like, you know, everything's done outside the... The running track. That's, yeah. that's what I admire about like um, athletes because sort of unlike footballers, a footballer will train all week and then at the weekend they've got a game, mm -hmm. right? You guys will let us literally like, you'll do winter training for instance, yeah. you go away, train for the whole winter, no one sees you, no one's heard from you, no one's really talking about you, you sort of lock yourself away mm -hmm. and you're doing all them hard yards to come back in the sort of summer period Deliver. to, and that's when we see you, but you, most of your work has been done away from 
everyone. Yeah. And you're putting in them hard yards. And sometimes with injuries as well. No, you do. And I think as you get older, you find it more frustrating, more harder with, with injuries. But as you said, everything is done outside here. And again, you know, if I want to get in great shape, for example, like I said, I'm, I'm racing in September, like the preparations are already starting now and I'll go, I'll go into training camp, you know, eight weeks to six weeks where I just go out there in the mountains and eat, sleep, train and involve, you know, two runs a day. So run in the morning, 10 to 12 miles, and then in the afternoon run five to six miles. And then some days, you know, you'll try and squeeze in a gym where, you know, you go and do a bit of core, a bit of weights. But you, it, it, it takes time, to, you know, to, to be able to do that. But again, as I said, you've got to prepare well um, if you want to be the best. And over the years, you know, I, I took a lot of stuff for granted for myself and thinking, yeah, I just can do it and can do it. And, you know, when ages catch up with you, the body gives up on you. And that, now that's the most frustrating part. Yeah. But again, it's, it's part of life, you know. Uh, you yeah. can't always stay at the top. At some point, you can come down and what down here and what's the point, some point go up. And it's just accepting that, yeah. you know. So you, you, your last race is going to be in September, you said? That's yeah. it? Yeah, September September the 10th is the Great North Run. That will be my final race. And it depends what kind of shape I get into beforehand, if I feel yeah. okay might do like a week before uh, uh, like a half marathon so but mainly you know that's that's it as that elite athlete jeez and, what yeah. are you gonna do gonna find something to do with the nurses <laughs> <laughs> i can't sit at home with this energy and, you know i love to be able to get involved with you know mm. the younger kids and, and showing them you know what is possible for uh, if you commit and and, and work yeah. hard and graft and again you know for me as a young boy uh, if it wasn't for my PE teacher who took me to local running club and then from that moment I, I wouldn't be in the sports and I think there's a lot of youngsters who have a great talent out there in the world, in the UK, in, in different areas and I'd love to be able to, you know, to show them what is possible and, uh, yeah. and ha somehow, you know, mentor them and, and, and involve, you know, be able to give back to yeah. them, particularly the community and, and younger kids. No, it's brilliant. Um, How'd you get into Arsenal then? Right? <laughs> because, you know what I mean? That's one thing I, I love about you. You always, you, I'm you Arsenal. I'm Arsenal. any excuse, you'd be showing, man, Arsenal's your team, right? How did you become an Arsenal supporter? Honestly, as I said, like, as growing up, when you go to school, as a young boy, obviously, like, where, where, the house I was living in and, and relative and stuff like that, yeah, slightly older, older people, they're always like Liverpool or United. That, so that was the house. <laughs> and as you, you know, as you learn to talk and, and be able to make decisions and not just try and make your parents or relatives happy. Mm. It was always, you know, I always loved Arsenal as a young boy. I always had a soft spot, but in our household, everyone was pretty much united. Yeah. So they're like, yeah, United. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, United. And then after <laughs> a while, you're like, you know what? I'm just like trying to support them or try and keep them mm. happy because of them. And then early on, I was like, listen, I'm Arsenal. I like I like Arsenal, and then they end up going, you know, when they were living it. That was, of course, a lot in of argument in those it, days. It, it, it did. That's when the rivalry is at its height, height as well, wasn't it? it? Yeah. <laughs> and I remember that I was sharing a room with my cousin, and at the time, we were like, listen, this is my side of the wall, this side, your side of the wall, and my side, you know, had Arsenal on it. <laughs> and his side had, like, United. And again, like, that's how much fan I was. And I'll never forget, you know, like, yeah, you know, Tony Adams, uh, David Seaman, Thierry Henry, Beckham, and, and you, go, you go back in generation. That was our yeah. era of, you know, yeah. when you grow up, a strong Arsenal. Yeah. yeah, unbelievable Arsenal. I mean, I've seen things like you training <laughs> at the ground with the team. I mean, how cool was that? Like training, well, you, was you actually training them or were you training with them? I was training with them, man. What happened was, um, it was after, I think, 2011. Yeah. Uh, when I won the World Champs and as I said, like, I always talk about Arsenal and at the time Arsenal got in touch and he says, listen, we, do you want to come and see the players and, and check out the training ground? I was like, yep. <laughs> and I was living at the US at the time. So I got yeah. a flight. You came, flew back for I it? I flew back for it. I came back and at the time I asked the Wenger was, was managing him and stuff and then I went through and then you go through all the rooms and you're having a chat with him. And I didn't bring boots at the time. <laughs> and I was just like, he, and he was like, listen, okay, okay, this is the players that I'm watching them. And I was so excited just meeting them because again, these players is the mm. players that you watch growing up and, you know, you see them on telly. And for me, I was like a little kid, just excited and looking at, oh my God, that's Thierry Henry. Oh my God, Fabregas. And some, mm. some, some players were still there. Uh, Thomas Risky. Um, yeah. yeah. There's, there's a lot of them there. And I, um, and I remember just like, 
gobsmacked. And, and at the time, I was like, then I asked Arsene Wenger, he's like, I said, can I have a kick around? And he was like, okay, you can. And then he was like, make sure you sign this form, sign the form, show me the boot. If you're breaking leg, it's not yeah, that lot. Exactly, because that's how much I wanted. But I remember like being excited. And I, again, you don't take things for granted. As I said, growing up, honestly, I watch Arsenal uh, many, many years. Mm. And again, to be in the same room with these players or on the pitch with them, yeah, but they must one have been the best thing about you. They were probably thinking the same thing about you as well. <laughs> but that's sports, you know. We all, like, you know, we, we, we just, you know, we, we, we're a fan of these guys and yeah, yeah. massive support, as you said. And, and even now, I get excited if I see youngsters or you know, certain legends, Arsenal legends. Yeah. And you're like, oh my god, that's Adams. Oh, that's David Seaman. And over the years, as, as you in that industry together, mm. you get to know them and you build a great relationship. But again, you never forget that moment of your life where you met your hero. And you, you, you're all right at football, man. I saw you, you even, yeah. I, was, I, I came to the um, the training day. Yeah, when soccer they, aid. The soccer aid. And yeah, I watched the soccer aid on TV. Yeah. And you were all right. You were playing at the back as well. Yeah. You're sort of playing in right. sort of defence, midfield, like sort of kind of Kante-like, <laughs> right? And you putting some tackles in there and yeah. never thought of becoming, you know, di, di, obviously maybe that now it's a bit too late age-wise, yeah. but did you never consider football? I yeah, did. I mean, listen, man, you got the speed. Yeah, yeah. You got the stamina. No, no one's going to question stamina. You, you'd be able to run. You, as they you say, football, you're going to have a great. He's got a great engine, that mo. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to be all right there, yeah. right? So never, never thought of football. No, I did. As, as a grown up, as I said, all I ever saw is football. And as a young boy, all, all I wanted to become is a football player, not runner. Yeah. I didn't want to become a runner. I wanted to play football. And my dream was always to maybe one day play for Arsenal. You know when you have a vision, a young boy, and you're yeah. collecting stickers and switching your friends, and and I think I was at about 14, 15 at the time. I was playing for my local club, um, bet, uh, bet from United, and we were doing on the Saturday training, and then on the Sunday the game, and it was fun. They put me like right midfield and right back, and but the problem was, Robbie, I didn't understand football. I could kick mm. a ball, clear it out, and cross it, mm. uh, and because of my speed was okay. But listen, football is different. You've got to understand the game. Yeah, You've got to read the movement, game. It's the movement, spaces, it's the agility, scanning, the scanning. Are, look, yeah, I never yeah. had any of that. Yeah. And I'm going, it's the scouts here. Did they see me? <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's, it's different. It's different. And again, like realizing early on, like when I was 15, and going, listen, I'm a good runner, but football ain't for me. Yeah. I still love it and, and watch it, but uh, early on, I did realize that wasn't yeah, that great. you say Bolt? say that as well, isn't it? because obviously with his pace and that, he wanted to be a footballer as well. Yeah, but, but all, we, we all do. And that, that mm. same, as I said, like when you're chatting with well, my son's playing a bit of football now, you're watching him and you're seeing, it's, it's different movements. Agility is like being able to for football. You have to be able to have that football and move side, side, turn, twist and running. It's like being able to get, run forward and you know, keep your body straight and, and run as straight line as possible, which football mm. is totally opposite. Yeah. It's the movement. You never go straight line yeah. unless you've got like a Messi or Ronaldo, mm. you know, over the ball and, and, and running forward. But all the time you're going zigzag. Yeah, no, and, it's, and it's, it's different. It's, yeah, different skill. But yeah, listen, you did all right with what you thank chose. You, mate, so, thank so, you, mate. Thank you. I just gave away a couple of goals, but it's fine. <laughs> you did more than all right. You did more than all right. I right? see so you made the right choice, right? Yeah. Um, Arsenal. Now, last season, we had an incredible season. Um, for most of the season, we're top of the league. Um, had some incredible performances from some of our players, yeah. Saka, Jesus, Saliba. And at one stage, it looked like we were going to win the league. And then... The last bit. Here comes... It's a bit like a, a marathon. Yeah, I'll yeah. be running a marathon now. I'm up front. Is Mo I'm coming in the lead. And then I look over my shoulder. Mo Farris on, started to catch me up. And I'm thinking, oh, God, here he comes, man. Yeah. And then you just... That's a bit like I used to run, actually. You used to <laughs> like, wait well, till the end and yeah. you had that little burst. That's what City did to us, wasn't it? Yeah, they did. And honestly, as I said, we should be proud of our team for how far we've come. And, mm. and you know, I've been lucky enough seeing it uh, where we had, you know, winning the league and then coming, you know, fourth, fifth, and mm. when Wenger left. Well, honestly, we did miss him because we never really appreciate the work he did at, at yeah. the time. Even myself, I was like, you know, took things mm. for granted. But what has Arteta done with the team? Let's talk about it. It's incredible. Yeah. It's such a young team. And again, the team is not just about playing football. It's keeping them happy, keeping them in the right form and getting team to trust him 
and that takes time and effort. Mm. And I honestly, I couldn't be more proud. And again, ask the values for what we stand for the club. Um, again, I'm just proud of our Arsenal fan too. Obviously, if you would have asked me this question beginning of the season, and you said to me, listen, Mo, what do you think of the league? I would say to you, Robbie, I want to, we want to make it into the Champions League. We would love to finish the top four. That was yeah. always our aim. Yeah. But again, the, the way the team, you know, put in them games and, and for all the way to December, we were top. It's only came down to what, last yeah. six games? Should we have won it though, in your opinion? Honestly, as I said, like, we've done well. It, w- it would have been nice to win, but it's only two games, that, you know, didn't get the result we wanted. And I think that would have changed. Mm. But overall, we can't be disappointed with such a young players. Yeah. And I hope, as I said, like, listen, I hope he's given them a taste, he's given them a lift, he's given them belief. Uh, even myself, you know, at times, if I didn't win races, uh, no, the coach can say to me, whatever. But if I didn't win the races myself and have that confidence myself, he could tell me everything and it still wouldn't be the same. Mm. But again, I, th- I think a lot of the players, this would have been a wake up thing for them. It would have been build their confidence. And for next year, <coughs> it's definitely <coughs> looking good. And again, mm. as I said, City, if, if you weigh it compared to City to ourselves, I think obviously City, had, they got in terms of depth, what they have. Yeah. It's incredible. And again, we, honestly, when Saliba got, got injured, um, we, we missed him. And again, yeah. we've, we've now, Hopefully, we you know building the team again even more and, and make it even more stronger. Yeah, well, listen, we just missed out. Um, it's about going again next season, and you know it's transfer time. I don't know if you. Oh, well, I've been watching. I've yeah. been watching your TV. <laughs> You're constantly looking at the transfer, yeah. right? But Arsenal, this transfer window, have made some incredible. Declan Rice. Declan Rice. Uh, I mean, it's what big. have you made of this, the signing of Declan Rice? Honestly, there's a lot of talk, as you said. We Everybody's got their piece and they can say it. But Declan Rice is a, is a great young player. And if you break it down for what he does and, and, and what, what he can do, obviously, he's playing mm. for England, and what you can do with that ball. In terms of midfield, having him in midfield, I think will change a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, in terms of how you can get hold of the ball, how he can see it, how he can make a run. I think our, our midfield needed some key player in there to just yeah. hold. And I think it's a perfect fit. Obviously, yeah. you know, the, it comes with a price. But again, I think he, he <laughs> does his own. price. Yeah. But that's what, like you said, that's what you've got to pay for the very yeah. best players, isn't it? And a bit sad that, you know, I mean, I, I, you know the thing that saddened me a little bit? I mean, I'm so gassed. Mm. that Declan Rice has come in, but Xhaka, I kind of wanted him to stay. No, I'm a fan of Xhaka. Yeah, yeah. And I see him, listen, he, we, had a, we had a moment and we never, obviously, <coughs> as our Arsenal fan, I'm, I'm, you know, we've got a season ticket, we've got to see week and week out whenever they're playing home. Um, he overcome a, a, a lot of challenges he had. Yeah. And to see what he's become in the club, and I, as I said, like it does, it feels a bit sad to see him leave because again, we, you know, he's contributed towards you know, to come in second in the league and, and, and uh, mm. we got, we, I think he's done incredible. Yeah. Um, but again, it's sometimes it's a tough decision. Yeah. It's like, what do we need? Uh, how, can, how can we get closer to the league? What, what, what does it take? And I think sometimes it's not, as I said, it's, it's hard, but it's a difficult one. It is. Are you, so are you excited that Declan Rice is one of the players that excites you about the new season? No, he does excite me. Again, he's, he's, a, he's a big passion. He has a big passion. He has mm. his belief. And again, I think that will lift players up uh, as well as being a gr- great football player. Yeah. And, and I think, like, as I said, West Ham, come on, man, what he's done for them. If you have a look, yeah. there was a moment that he changed the game. And I hope that he can, he can fit in with our yeah. team as well. Kai Havertz as well. That, From that. Chelsea, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I sent him a message. I was like, Mate, welcome. <laughs> that was me Instagram. Kind oh, you of sent a message to, yeah, to yeah, Kai Havertz? Yeah. So you, you, you like that signing? I did, I did like it. And yeah. I think it's a great signing for us. Um, honestly, Kai Havertz is a great player. I don't think Chelsea got a lot, a lot out of him mm. uh, in terms of what he was capable. But again, as I said, like we can bring in the best guys. But if he's not fitting in right and he hasn't got the right players around him, and, and everything, it, take, it takes a lot. And again... Yeah. I know Arteta's taken quite a lot of hit, hit the heat, but honestly, I'm a, I'm a big believer of what he's done. He's not, it wasn't about going, okay, guys, I'm bringing in so-and-so, I'm changing everything. He did make a lot of changes, 
but it's being able to give the manager some time. Yeah. And, and we've done the right thing as Arsenal fans um, to give him that time, to, make, to, to let him fill the team and see. And I said, Robbie, I, said, I always ask these questions. You know, when the players have, you know, this everything, how do you motivate them? Yeah. That, that's the questions, like, even yeah. myself, like, is it, listen, to, how, how do I motivate myself to be the best? I try and go back to basic, go in the camp, feel hungry and then that's how you get it. and then think about the moments of you winning and, and to get that thing up again it's the players all this to get the best out of them it's not an easy it's not an easy yeah, thing yeah. and I think some play some coaches come in and you know we expect straight away to change stuff and it takes time and I think as I said with the club and what he's done with such a young team I think we should you know give credit no honestly. 100% we've got to give him credit and you know as I said like Deccan Rice Havertz Julian exactly. Timber as well Another player coming in, um, new deals for Saliba, for Reese Nelson, for Saka as well, yeah, yeah. Martinelli. I mean, we've got now all of a sudden, well, not even all of a sudden, he's been putting this together. We've got an incredible team. They're very young and the ceiling for these players is really high. I mean, Saka at the moment. Yeah. What demand. an incredible player this kid is. But I'll never forget even Saka, as I said, like when I was... Lucky enough to turn up at the training ground seeing him. I remember someone pointing at Saka going, watch out for this kid. He was a young boy. And to see the man he'd become and putting away goals and, and keeping Arsenal in, in, in the position they are in, it's, mm. it's incredible. And again, it just shows, you know, the depth is, is coming through. And it's yeah. not, we're, not, we're not going, going, I want this young player from here, Rhys Nelson, come from the club, you know, from Scouts, Alan and everyone who contributed mm. to, towards that. And again, to have him to, to see how he's developed and making the first team and, and sign, just signing, as you said, a new contract now. It's nice to have that. Yeah, incredible when you see them come through the ranks and make it all the way. I mean, there could be maybe, you know, you said you were retiring in, <laughs> in, in um, What do you reckon, Robbie TV, Arsenal? Right. All in well, Africa. I, was, I was thinking more like a job of you uh, sort of at the training ground, fitness coach or something like that. Surely, come on, no, man. Listen, as, I said, like, listen, as I said, I'm a massive... Even Arsenal. a little part-time fitness coach <laughs> thing, isn't it? Put them through their paces, man. Yeah, they probably see you coming down and they'll be thinking, oh, no, He's going to make me run a mile. <laughs> no, run <laughs> away. We're going to be running like... You remember when, um, I think it was um, no, Ten Hag, no, yeah. when he made them run, the other team outrun them by 10k and he made, brought them in for the next day and they had to run 10k or something. That'd be you, innit? Nah. And now we'll be able to keep up with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, football's different. It's different. But again, it's, you know, I've seen and, and facilities and everything else. It's not just about game of, you know, kicking mm. the ball. It's the, it's the things you do outside the training. And I think with, with Arteta and the team, they've got it pretty much figured out with a lot of stuff to do, everything they're doing. Yeah. I've got some quick fire questions for yeah. you, yeah? Right, when did the I Arsenal win the league? Huh? Yeah. <clears throat> right. We, we, get, we get to some of these, right? So, question number one. Your favourite all-time Arsenal player? It's a tough one. My favourite all-time player have to be Thierry Henry. Why? <sighs> Just to see the goals you can... What he did on the pitch uh, at Highbury. You can't yeah. forget that. Yeah, exactly. It's a close one between him and Dennis Bergkamp. Him and Bergkamp. But I think yeah. Henry, just because... Va va vu. Va va vu. All right. Your current favourite player? My current player. Favourite player in the current team? Saka. Saka? Yeah. Why? I've seen as him as a young boy and to see the man he's become and, and you know, the, what, what's the best player in Arsenal field right now and, and to show his, you know, his age as well as what he's capable. Listen, it's not, there's not many kids at that, that age could yeah. do what he do and have the right attitude. Yeah, and his temperament is unbelievable, isn't it? Favourite Arsenal moment? Your favourite Arsenal My favourite Arsenal moment will have to be winning the league. Just a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, which the one? Invisible. The, 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 the invisible, invisible season. Yeah, yeah that invisible was season. That was incredible. All right. Team you dislike the most. Now, I know you, you tried to Tottenham, be nice to everybody. Tottenham, Tottenham, <laughs> come on. <laughs> right, yes. Right. Um, the question that you asked right at the start, yeah. where will Arsenal finish this season? I hope we can win the league. I might be a big fan. That's not what I asked. Yeah. Let me ask about hope. 
Yeah, no, listen, Where? one. You're well, going first. If you, if you set yourself here, yeah. and you go under it, why are you going to set it low? You always go high. One. First. Love that. Love that. Right. If we can make one more sign in this transfer window, right? Realistic sign in. Before you tell me Mbappe, I was, like, I was right. just about to say that. <laughs> Realistic. There's a little talk. Realistic, right? Yeah. Um, who would it be? Who would you like to see come? Obviously, you'd love to see Mbappe. Who else then? I think it would be. It's hard, but again, I'm, I'm looking at who we have and what we could do with. I think if we had one key player at the back, you can just hold, be responsible. Uh, Saliba, again, as I said, like a perfect mm. example is Saliba. When Saliba got injured, we really did miss him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess Timber's coming in. Although I, I get the feeling Timber's going to be more of a right back. But yeah, yeah. And if you can just have one player at the back. Yeah. So, all right. So, so, so another defender. Another defender. Okay. Um, this is a question for you, right? This is the last question. Um, if you were born again, yeah? Yeah. And you could choose a career that you'd be the best in. So the heights that you've reached football, in football, athletics, football, football. you know, four gold medals, yeah. Olympic gold medals, six world title golds, Sir Mo Farah, Farah yeah. just icon, or you become a footballer who plays for Arsenal. And the best player in Arsenal. The best player in Arsenal. Yeah. So you'd be, you'd be Saka. Okay. What would you be? I'll go Saka. Serious? Honestly, yes. Because I can't... Six gold medals. Um, four Olympic gold medals. I know, but listen... I'm four! Four! You're going to give up your four Olympic golds, your six um, world golds. Yeah, you would. Right? Oh, listen, I love football. The I'm sir really... goes back to but Buckingham again, Palace. But listen, if, yeah. if you're Saka... And you keep doing that, Saka will get that. I reckon he'd be knighted. He'd be <laughs> so it's, gonna be, it's gonna be Sir Bokaya Saka then. Yeah, at some point. But if, he, if he shows the way he's going and, yeah. and he keeps his head down and, and show, listen, you saw England, he's got a hat trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant hat trick as well. Brilliant. And again, with Arsenal, what you've shown, uh, with that, you know, you, know, you have to give credit where it's due and what he's showing is just incredible. I hope he just keeps that yeah. and, and keep on going. See, I'm asking you again. So you swap? No, Arsenal, man. <laughs> That's a proper Arsenal fan. He's swapping it Listen, all this is how bad I am. My, my son, when he was born, um, mm. I wanted to call his middle name Arsenal. My wife was like, no. <laughs> the only reason I didn't now call him is going a bit far. Like, yeah, it's a little the middle name Arsenal. <laughs> Arsenal. She's like, listen, he's going to school. What are you going to expect? Arsenal's middle name. I was like, <laughs> more thought that is that no. But listen, that's what I wanted to. I'm a huge. I've got a season ticket, and we love Arsenal. No, it's brilliant. Well, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure yeah. having you on, man. And um, I wish you all the best of luck for your last race, and I wish you all the best of luck um, for all your future ventures. Somehow, I think I just see you racing again. Yeah, I mean, no, that's man, listen, my body's giving up on me. I love to go and race. My heart's in it. You still, still be running going. though, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'll still, still be running. I'll be it's probably active. part of your life now. You just run, right? You listen, just... I said like, if I don't run. I feel like anxious and I need to go and do something with, with myself. Like throughout, you know, when I was a young boy from 12 to yeah. now, every day pretty much, unless I was injured, I run. That's the only thing I know. Yeah. So for me, you when I go before, run, you, before you go, actually, I've yeah. got to get a tip, man. Yeah, because I'm trying, to, I'm trying to sort my health out now, my fitness, man. I've got, I've been doing, been back in the gym. I see Alan in the yeah. back, they're laughing. This is Alan, this, this is serious yeah. now, right? So I've been trying to get back in the gym, which I have. Trying to do, you know, but one thing I've always wanted to do was like some running. Yeah. But I just hate it. Like, I just can't run. And I, I even watch it, you know, they've got these videos on YouTube yeah, where yeah. it says uh, from couch to running. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I watched that and they showed the little stages. Is that literally how you do it? You just sort of start off small, just run yeah. like to the end of the road, then build it up, build it up, build it up. Yeah, honestly, it's like running is like, it's, it's a, it's a perfect way to get fit and, and do stuff and then running most people go I can't run like you but you don't have to run like me you know you just, it, take, it, take, it takes steps so the first bit I think is to do is like what, what something can motivate you for example you say to yourself listen I want to run a mile or two miles in six months time or, or, or six, 
you have to have a goal. Well, when you have that goal, you go, okay, I've got three months, four months, whatever time to prepare. And then again, you just start off walking, jogging, walking. And, and just each week, if you can increase a little bit, a little bit, you will get there. And once you get that, you know, target at the way you love. Even my wife, she hated running before. She was a sprinter. And now she's like competing like half marathon, 10 Ks. She's running every day. But she's a bit injured now. But yeah, she was running every day because again, she just find it. She's in that peace, that mindset and, mm. and, and just being in a happy place. And, and she just goes out there. And when she comes back from run, she's a totally different person. And again, we all have to find something that just, just mm. whatever that is. Right. And, and running is peaceful, honestly. I do, right. as I said, that also one. lose a game, go out for a run, never take a little more run. Just put your headphones back. on, little walk. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> this is an absolute Thank pleasure you, having you on. Thank you. Cheers, man. So, Mo Farah, um, it's been an absolute honour to have him, a massive Arsenal fan. And Huge. let's hope he's right. And next season, Arsenal win the league. Listen, you Chelsea fan, you Tottenham fans, if you don't have faith in your team, who are you going to have? Come on, Arsenal. Come on. Shop for AFTV merch at shop.aftv.co.uk. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, and Twitch. We've got content for every platform, so check it out.